B. That's it. That one off-centered red letter on a blank screen. As you bend your brain trying to understand how this new ground submission simultaneously earned 1.5 million views and also being dubbed Turd of the Week, you're not alone. Is this a Banksy? Is this just fantasy? Why not A or C? This one baffling submission single-handedly created an entire subculture on Newgrounds that has led to multiple sub-subcultures and many other impressive yet confusing and unpredictable outcomes that has all now endured as of today for 20 years. This is a look at the history of the Clock Crew, their founder, Strawberry Clock, and the long-lasting tradition of Clock Day. How's it going guys? My name's Graham. Welcome to Two Left Thumbs. This is Flashlight, the series where I look at the history of all things Flash related. Hello there. I would like to wish you a happy clock day. To which you may respond, what? And I say, I'm Strawberry Clock. And you say, what? And if you say this, it is because you don't know what Strawberry Clock is. Or care. So this is, A Brief History of the Strawberry Clock. A documentary of Strawberry Clock and the Clock Group. Throughout this video, I'll use snippets of an interview that Strawberry Clock did not too long ago with the interviewer on Newgrounds. They were even kind enough to answer a few of my own questions, which is really exciting as they become somewhat of an obscure character around the site. In recent years, they've started to re-emerge slightly, but in-depth, long looks at what their life and career have been are a little rare. I'll be sure to distinguish which of these came from the interviewer and which of them came from my own questioning. 20 years ago today, on August 15th, 2001, the user Strawberry Clock uploaded B to the Newgrounds portal and changed everything. Spam-based submissions were nothing new to Newgrounds. Ever since the introduction of the automated, user-controlled portal system, users have been attempting to squeeze the worst, most low-effort submissions through. Most of the time intentionally, sometimes not. For those less familiar, the portal is based on these thresholds. At those different vote count thresholds, the system looks at your submission's average score based on user votes. If you land above that threshold, your submission is protected at least until the next checkpoint. If you instead fall below, your submission is blammed, never to be seen again. In more recent years, this has been tweaked, it's more of a dynamic system, it factors in things like number of authors tied to the submission, but generally, this is approximately how the system works. This is meant to keep out hateful, low effort, or other inappropriate content. It's overall pretty effective. It takes a lot of burden off of the individuals, and makes it so the portal doesn't have to be as heavily moderated, with a specific team of people hand-picking every animation. The user Strawberry Clock themselves had several other low effort submissions, or spam, that would attempt to mislead users into voting 5 to pass their movie through the portal. Some of them are just straight up random nonsense, others make claims like you'll get access to celebrity nudes if you vote 5. I'll assume for every one of these that slipped through, a multitude of their submissions were actually blammed along the way. Normally I would read out snippets of interviews myself, but in the spirit of Clock Day animations, I want to have Strawberry Clock's responses read out by Speakonia. It is a staple of clock culture, and so even though it may be a tiny bit irritating, I do really want to commit to the bit. The context of that is given a little later in this video. I wanted to know how Strawberry themselves view spam on the site. Whether it fills a niche, served some function, or existed strictly to antagonize. I see spam as people just having fun with making content and not caring what other people think, which can lead to a lot of creative things. Once you've made it through that portal, you would either have to have your submission taken down through copyright infringement, like using songs off the latest pop album, having something truly vile or hateful, or by deleting it yourself. If it's simply low effort and not very good, it's too late, you've already made it through. It's not impossible to have crappy animations get through, and it happens all the time. I have multiple of my own that were some of my earliest works that probably should have just stayed in my private collection. But there's something special about those submissions that scrape by with only a 1 or 2 out of 5, and get to live on the same portal that some of the best animations ever made exist on. Now here comes B. It has been confirmed that there was actually an A before this, but that one didn't make the cut and was blamed. Strawberry Clock intended to upload the entire alphabet, one letter at a time, trying to see if they could get any of them through, not expecting the second one ever to work. 
but B was special. For some unknown reason, this one managed to squeeze through that user filter. Tom Fulp himself, the creator of Newgrounds, has said of it, no one knows how it survived. Not even I understand exactly why this all happened, and I never will. But it did, and I'm thankful for it. I spent more time uploading the Swift to Newgrounds than I did making the Flash. B earned Turd of the Week, which has handed out the submission with the lowest score that still managed to be approved for the portal. It was meant to be a gag of a way to highlight the submission that set a low bar for the week. Some users took it upon themselves to try to aim for Turd of the Week. This became fairly common and motivated a lot of the spam that entered the portal, but generally people had some level of discernment for quality and wouldn't pass just anything. It had to be bad yet tolerable in a way that rides a very thin line. So this waste of a submission that probably should have faded into complete obscurity slipped through with the lowest possible score and slowly started to gain some attention, not just for having that award, but just the bafflingness that it could have made it through at all. You can see that the earliest reviews on Newgrounds came after winning Turd of the Week. That's how little attention was paid to it at first. And these reviews are users ironically praising the submission as being intelligent, inspired, and utter loving genius. We'll assume that's a, a good thing. Its score began to steadily rise as its notoriety grew. That began to snowball and get way out of hand, cementing it as a top-rated video. It's not something that cracks the top 50 of Newgrounds. That still does end up being reserved for the absolute top 1% of submissions, but it is currently sitting at a 4.44 out of 5. I'm pretty sure that's higher rated than any single thing I've ever done on that site. It did not start out that way. It started at the bottom, now it's here. While we're talking new grounds in Flash history, I would like to direct you broadly to the Two Left Thumbs Steam Publisher page. There are currently two projects listed over there, something new and something nostalgic. For the new, I'm teaming up with the Milk Bar Lads to bring their popular horror-themed roguelike, Dead Estate, to Steam, with tons of extra content coming out this October. And on the nostalgic side of things, I'm working with Bradborn to revitalize and repackage the first three worlds of the Fancy Pants Adventures. We're including all sorts of updated features and enhancements that make that worthwhile. I feel so honored to start out my journey as a publisher by working directly with people who come from Newgrounds. That's very important to me, and I think that either one of those would be worth your time. Maybe give that Steam page a follow, wishlist a couple of games, and keep an eye out for some release dates later this year. So let's talk about the man behind the mystery. It all began with a user named Strawberry Clock. One day he said, I want to cause emotional distress to all humans, and so he made a really bad cartoon while the Newgrounds trolls were sleeping and it made it through the crap filter. He became a hero to all those people who give zeros to Adam Phillips' cartoons and the arch enemy of everyone else. I was a dumb kid with unrestricted internet access and stumbled upon Newgrounds when I was 12 or 13 in the late 90s, before the automated portal even existed. It was unlike anything I've ever seen before, and when the automated portal came about, it got me excited. Only problem for me was my Flash movies were terrible and got rightfully blamed. As with most users who dedicated themselves to spam submissions, Strawberry Clock became reviled in the community, with a lot of aggression and hate flung their way. Strawberry Clock was born out of seeing how angry I could make people over low-effort Flash movies then laugh at them. That's all SPC was supposed to be, and I figured I'd get bored one day and drop it, and everyone else would forget about it. I wasn't expecting all of this as a result. Who would? Newgrounds had been this pillar in the online animation and Flash communities as somewhere where you knew you were getting products of a certain quality. They're coming approved directly from the viewers, signing off on it saying, yes, on some level this is worth your time. The automated portal was coming off the curtails of Tom hand-selecting everything on the site, so he was very specifically setting a bar that everyone should try to hit. People obviously came above and below that once the automated portal began, but there was a range there that was still relatively tight. Nowadays, there are so many users attempting this spam-focused strategy, mixed in with users who earnestly upload every three-frame work-in-progress they put together, or some weird live-action home movie that obviously didn't belong on the internet in any capacity. There are hundreds of submissions blammed on a weekly basis. If you upload something titled Test, and it's you using your phone to record your computer screen as you drag madness characters around in paint, you're either going to be a one-in-a-million B-type submission 
or it's getting bland. The dumping grounds exists for a reason. If you just want to share around some works in progress with your friends, use the dumping grounds. It's a bit of a pet peeve, but it's kind of just also how the system works. If your thing is crappy or incomplete, it'll get blamed. So I can't even be that mad at people using the site this way because that's how it's designed to function. The surprising portal approval of B, and it's even more unlikely success that followed both worked to lift Strawberry Clock up and become this hero to some and also caused their haters to double down. There were always spammers on new grounds. I was not the first, but I think I was one of the most persistent. Other people would usually submit one or two bad movies and move on with their lives. There was a rift in Newgrounds. There are those who saw this as an affront to the creative integrity of the community, that their filters of quality were now compromised, that spammers were out there approving the work of other spammers. Maybe things had gotten out of control and needed to be trimmed back. It became a fight to safeguard the portal. If you cared about quality, you had to make sure you were participating. It's something Newgrounds could use a boost with nowadays. Something is considered under judgment if it has less than 200 votes and has survived those voting thresholds we mentioned earlier. The under judgment section would commonly have 10 or 20 submissions, and hundreds of people would check daily to rate those. Even with Newgrounds' recent surge in popularity, in recent years users seem more hesitant to brave this section of new submissions. Nowadays the purple under judgment submissions rack up so high that they often extend beyond the 60 submissions displayed at a time on the portal. It could seriously use some more manpower on a near daily basis to help clean that up and to prove and blam new submissions. It's like sorting by new on Reddit before things have thousands of upvotes to tell you which is worth watching. It's an important part of how Newgrounds functions, and I just want to remind people that it's a really easy way to give back to the community. And as you do so, you earn experience, it actually gives more weight to your vote over time. It's a cool way to participate while remaining a lurker, and you could even show off a little bit by earning some new levels. So yeah, something to keep in mind, I would encourage you to give it a try if you've never really taken part in the votes before. So, people were pissed. It may seem overly dramatic in hindsight, but think back to the same thing that happened when Steam stopped hand curating their games. Suddenly we had hundreds of games per day with no guarantees of quality. It upset the system until creators, users, and Steam themselves were able to adjust. That same thing happened on Newgrounds over 10 years earlier, several years before Steam even existed. There was an anti-clock group that took shape even before the clock crew was all that well defined. Plenty of animations were created depicting Strawberry Clock being killed, whether that be by other Newgrounds characters, Tom Fulp himself, or in a variety of other ways. This reached a counterpoint where the then Clock crew sent a letter to Tom Fulp, pleading with him, suggesting that maybe all this had gone too far, and maybe intervention was required on one side or the other. This went on for a while eventually leading to people trying to dox Strawberry Clock, phoning their real-life house, and making death threats. That turned me off of the clock crew for a while, but later I realized that it was unfair to the rest of the clocks. Most are really great people. Now I make sure to submit something every single clock day, and keep in touch with the clocks every once in a while. Essentially, it was left to just play out. People kinda cooled their jets over time, and the longer the clock crew stuck around, the more obvious it was how non-malicious they were, and people began to grow a little fondness for them. Strawberry Clock became the self-proclaimed king of the portal. Well, I do have a slight correction there. Other clocks came up with that. I can't take credit for that. It was funny when people referred to me as the self-proclaimed king of the portal when I never gave myself that title. Ah! Which is part of why the character is often depicted with a crown atop their head. It's a less than official title, but it's been around long enough that there's no one else who could really claim that throne at this point. So it's a fun thing that really has persisted, and no one takes that seriously. It's well accepted that it's a figurehead status, and nowadays we all rally behind it and enjoy it for what it is. Strawberry Clock had earned massive recognition and became featured as a part of the gang on Newgrounds' portal for many years, alongside major characters you've most likely heard of, like Captain, Bitey, Pico, a Madness Grunt, Salad Fingers, and many more. 
any of which are deserving of their own flashlight episodes someday. Pico and Tankman already have theirs. Madness is on the way. Let me know which of these you'd maybe rather see prioritized. There are very few users and accounts that have been elevated to this mythic status. There are names like Johnny Utah, Ego Raptor, The Swain, Stamper, and a hundred more that you've maybe heard of. But there are very few that became more than a user profile. They became a part of the culture, existing alongside those other mascot-like characters. Pekin Joe is another great example of this, and Strawberry Clock is kind of chief among them. A quick update from that Pico video while we're on the subject. I mentioned the tragic loss of Piconju the user. Turns out that was all just an elaborate story. It was kind of already suspected that that was the case. But literally days after that video went live, they revived their old account and have had a whole new surge in popularity, fan art, and submissions rallying behind this user and character. Pretty crazy what a long hiatus they took and the timing of that with my own video. But yes, they are alive and well with a whole new wave of fans in tow. Strawberry Clock themselves was an alt account, and somewhat of a throwaway username, and not really intended as a character, but it was the foundation for what was to come next. On the day B earned its turd, the account Orange Clock was made, and the day after Apple and Raspberry Clocks, and close to a month later Pineapple Clock was added. These five fruit-based clocks became the foundations of the clock crew, although Strawberry was mostly along for the ride, acting as more more of a mascot, with Orange Clock being the true mastermind and leader of the crew. The submissions from the Clock Crew have ranged from the all-too-familiar spam to stories featuring the Clock Crew characters adding to the lore of the clocks, which was just kind of added to seemingly haphazardly until it became what it is today. Those original five members were mostly focused on spam, but still established that the crew lives in the realm of Clocktopia and that Strawberry Clock is the king who rules over all, although he's often depicted as arrogant, selfish, and incompetent. It quickly became the norm for these characters to be voiced using using Speakonia. For the last few years, Strawberry Clock has been participating in Clock Day, telling a serialized story of his character, the misadventures of Strawberry Clock. He's going through an emotional journey, and it's going to break him figuring out what he's supposed to be doing with himself now. And he keeps changing his mind on an impulse on exactly what that is. But it won't be a SBC tune without absurdness and silliness everywhere, so I'll never let that aspect go. I'm making episode 4 right now, and it's the most ambitious so far. Fully voice acted, new art and animations techniques. I hope people like it. That should actually be out as of today, so you can go check that out on Newgrounds now. Soon other people decided to make their own clocks and they became the clock crew. One thing led to another, and now we are here creating these robotic, synthesized voices for the characters. They are also never lip-synced with true mouths, acting as a shortcut for what is one of the most painstaking processes in animation, staying true to their low-effort spam-based roots, even in submissions that do showcase real artistic talent. Joining the clock crew at the early stages was as simple as making your own blank clock named account. Move aside, troll sonas. If you wanted to be a hot it member, have a seat at the cool kids table. Having your own clock account was what it was all about. Nowadays, it's a little more stringent. With 20 years of history, you want to be certain that you don't start using a clock character that another member has been using for a long time. While there is definitely a broad style to clock movies, users pretty well had free reign to interpret that how they pleased. It was quickly becoming apparent that some of the more spam-focused, more malicious, and offensive clock submissions were now coming from haters. Users were creating clock accounts that focused on purposely damaging submissions, rather than the more harmless forms of spam, or even their higher effort works. There were already enough users who hated seeing the portal clogged with these spam submissions. Now mix that in with plenty of submissions that are genuinely offensive, and you go from people being somewhat 50-50 on the clocks to a pretty top-to-bottom all-out hate. Eventually, a formal website and forum were made, and official admissions were taken more seriously. A proper community was forming, the collective style refined, and a general camaraderie and eagerness to collaborate emerged. It inspired people to make things, not to make other people happy, but to make themselves happy. I still believe making yourself happy first most with your animation project is the most important part, even if you believe most people won't understand it. 
After all, you're never going to please everybody, no matter how good you make something. Rules were defined, and membership became more exclusive. Anybody could still register a Newgrounds Clock account, but participation in the Clock Crew forums, contributions to Flash submissions, and involvement in the crew became expected. Once membership became slightly more exclusive, it was easier to start picking out the pretenders and to ostracize them from the tight-knit community that was forming with the Clock Crew. And while sometimes they'll still spam for the fun and games of it, the crew stands for so much more now. Quality and collaboration are an important part of what they've cultivated. Staples of the Clock movies have been featured throughout this video, and include the silly, 10 minute long Strawberry Goes Camping from Crust Clock, the stoner road trip style movie Screaming Mushrooms from Tremclad Clock, the epic, ambitious, and often hilarious series by Blue Clock, The Void, Ah, uh, ready. Do it again. Blue Clock's The Void 2 is actually the first time Strawberry Clock ever said, Can I drive? We will drive away this anomaly. Can I drive? My king, I'm sorry, this is going to be an army, not a station wagon. Can I drive? Uh... I want to drive! You don't even have a driver's license. I want to drive right now! No! It's an army, you can't drive it! You are fired! What? I am the king, and I'm driving. Which has since become probably their most popular catchphrase. If you spend the time watching 10 different clock movies, you're probably gonna hear it at least once as well as plenty of flashes that break the typical clock mold. Like a collaboratively made fighting game, Clock Crew Fight Club. One of the earliest and most influential may be the Clock War Trilogy from way back in 2003, showing the formation of Clocktopia. There are literally hundreds of these to be watched of wildly varying quality, with there still being quite a bit of cream in that crop. But the bread and butter of the Clock Crew became the parodies. The most well-known is probably Lord of the Clocks. It's a parody of Lord of the Rings, not Flies. As well as 21 O'Clock Street, an orange clockwork, the Telltale Heart. It's a little bit of a letdown that there's no pun in that one. And so many more. Things even became more meta, with works like a Weeble and Bob parody starring Strawble and Rasp, or with Newgrounds team-ups like Strawberry Clock, Darnell, and Tomorrow's Nobody starring in a Matrix parody. Parodies have always been a huge part of Newgrounds, but that was pretty free reign. Anyone can interpret anything in any style. And while that's liberating and exciting and has produced some incredible works, there's something really fun about the predictability of a good clock animation, knowing what the rules and constraints are that the creator would have had to put on themselves to pull it off. And in that way, each clock submission feels like more of a creative challenge. And with that mindset, I find each one of them all the more enjoyable. What's the most you could possibly do with these characters, this interaction, this setting, while all still toning it down to the bare minimum? So much that you can't even bank on strong voice acting to salvage it, instead creating humor by leaning into the silliness of that. <coughs> It took me a lot of years to appreciate the Clock Crew for what they are, but now I think it's something so special. The Clock Crew is something to be celebrated. Happy Clock Day! What's Clock Day? The day in honor of Strawberry Clock! Who is Strawberry Clock? King of the Portal! What's the Portal? Where everything goes on new grounds! What's new grounds? As the notoriety of the clock crew grew, lifted by their continuous presence in the portal and forums and more and more clocks, both members and not emerging, and their occasional diamond in the rough, it grew large enough to become officially recognized by Newgrounds. In 2002, Tom very casually posted about and recognized Clock Day, something that had taken shape on its own, celebrating the one year anniversary of B. This was celebrated by spamming the portal with as many submissions as possible. Users are limited to only two per day, and the idea was for everyone to take full advantage. In the spirit of B, this infamous community encouraging users to vote five on everything and limit blams as much as possible. An unlucky few still don't make the cut every year, maybe from users who don't quite understand what's happening, or something didn't quite hit that special golden window of crappy, but it's such a highly specific tradition that can only exist on new grounds, and that's what makes it so special. The following year, the clock crew had gained even more traction, with Tom's Clock Day 2003 update reading, 
Happy Clock Day, everyone. Yeah, I know I shouldn't encourage them. Love them or hate them, the Clock Crew have been a big part of Newgrounds for over two years now. Clock movies started as a funny craze, became a looming threat, and eventually settled down as a silly mainstay of the site. Clocks and Newgrounds go hand in hand. Some may find that sad, but I've always thought it's kinda cool. It's a subculture within a subculture. In 2004, Tom was out of town, and while the crew themselves ran the event same as usual, the more formal celebration of front-paging the standout submissions was somewhat belated. The whole thing didn't quite have the usual attention and hype. But Tom made up for this in 2005 by formalizing Clock Day, advertising it ahead of time in the forums, creating a front page banner with a strawberry clock portal takeover, and really leaning into the festivities. The portal received 500 submissions that year. While many were blamed still for being too crappy and maybe not embracing the clock spirit, and many more have since been placed in limbo due to their frequent use of copyrighted music, there are still many left to be seen. Clock Day has remained an officially celebrated Newgrounds holiday ever since. I have a personal story about Clock Day that really bummed me out when I was 14 years old, but that I can't help but laugh at now. With next to no prior knowledge to the inner workings of Newgrounds and the larger culture, I created my first account on August 15th, 2006, and submitted my movie Microsoft Sam's Life. It was a stupid, barely animated cartoon using the Microsoft Sam voice synthesizer that me and my friends always used to make each other laugh in computer class. It sailed through the portal with something like a 4.2 rating. I was overjoyed, thinking that I was some animating prodigy. Surely people genuinely connected with my teenage sense of humor and appreciated the silliness of my depressing robotic character. Now I guess I will have to go to jail for selling drugs. You weren't there for that, you say. Ah. I hammered out Microsoft Sam's Life 2 and uploaded it days later. It earned a much more appropriate rating of, of something like 3 out of 5. I don't remember the exact numbers. I felt some strange sense of betrayal at the system. I didn't know what had happened. I thought this one was even better. How could people possibly think the quality had dropped off so steeply? I eventually learned what had happened, kind of figured it out, saw the front page post, whatever it was, something clued me in. I didn't like that people assumed it was intended as a clock style video, and that both my account and animation would become permanently tied to the clock crew and clock day. It was badly drawn, blandly delivered through a robotic voice, and submitted on clock day. How could they not? I immediately decided that the clock crew were spammers and nothing more and rejected the community. Sometime later, I deleted all 10 submissions I had on that account, deciding I no longer liked them and wanting to start new. I would re-upload a few choice selections of my animations there instead. Looking back, I really regret doing this, because a few of those are lost to time. I'll never get them back. It's part of why I don't delete old things off of YouTube. It really pains me to think that some of my earliest attempts at animation are gone, no matter how bad they were. At one time, I had some level of pride in them and wanted to put them out there. It doesn't hurt to see people suck in their early days. If anything, it makes it feel more achievable for newcomers. Anyways, I ironically made the decision to start a new account one year later, almost to the day. Not intentionally, mind you. That time of year must have just had a weird Newgrounds bug for me, but I narrowly missed making the exact same mistake a second time, not remembering exactly when clock day fell. The new account I've had for all that time since was made on August 12th. I uploaded a submission that day, the day after, the day after that on the 14th, and caught myself before I uploaded anything on August 15th. So while I really do believe Clock Day is special and should be celebrated, be careful when you make your account and when exactly your first submission is, and whether or not you want that to be tied to Clock Day. In the last nine months, with the release of Friday Night Funkin', Newgrounds has seen its largest influx in new users in as long as I can remember. I was curious how someone who's been a part of the scene for so long felt about the recent changes made around Newgrounds, following this new user base. No matter how many years pass, Newgrounds retains the same vision of the Newgrounds I grew up with, but for a brand new generation of animators. And there's no doubt in my mind many of them will make it big with their evolving talents. And beyond that, I was curious how he thought this younger crowd, many of who are going to be younger than the clock crew themselves, would feel about experiencing their very first clock day. I think they'll be quite surprised at the largely diverse amount of movies being made. It may even encourage some of them to become clocks and try animating themselves, and there's nothing wrong with more animators. I've been getting a lot of younger fans telling me they enjoy my stuff, but the strangest part for me is that they weren't even alive when I first started making things I was around their age when I first started this. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. 
There's nothing wrong with a healthy dose of optimism. Now you probably think that video sucked. Now I am angry and want to flip cars and punch old ladies. That is good, you are now in the spirit of clock day. So have fun and die in the fire. I mean happy clock day. In the time since, there have been many imitators. The Clock Crew is the original crew of Newgrounds, literally pioneering the concept and setting the template for what followed. As much as these others have tried to form their own identity, it's always inseparably linked to the clocks with the spin-offs still being collectively referred to as crews. The first of many was the Lock Legion. Rock out. Started by a former Clock Crew member, just dropping the C from Clock, and centering the crew around the new name and maintained alliteration. They came into being to act directly as rivals to the Clock Crew, attempting to upset their rule, mimicking their general animation style, and working to annoy them as well as other new grounders. Prior to there being other groups to use as antagonists, the character of Kylo was most commonly featured. They're not a clock, it's literally just text turned 90 degrees on its side. This is meant to directly be a user from Newgrounds. They were a well-known clock hater who went out of their way to vote zero on every clock submission and would brag about doing so. So it was only natural that they kill them in as many different flash submissions as possible. The Lock Legion was kicked off by the submission of SBL's Triumph by Strawberry Lock, a one-frame animation that I believe has since been removed due to copyright music playing over it. Shortly after, they even made the B parody N, which was specifically timed to be the 100,000th submission to the Newgrounds automated portal. Pretty cool to snag that honor. This occurred on May 26, 2003, although unlike B, this one was actually blammed with a score of 1.43 out of 5. So in a funny way, they missed their shot of trying to recreate the magic of B, but still managed to create their own legacy moment of something so typically Newgrounds-like, taking the celebratory 100,000th submission title and spiking it straight into the dirt. In some goofy, rebellious way, that just feels so on brand. What started as a joke with Strawberry Lock eventually grew and was taken more seriously thanks to the efforts of Banana Lock, creating their own form and more. Eventually, the rivalry became more of a thematic element rather than anything taken seriously by either crew. It was something to be played up for the sake of animations and collaborations, and to inspire some classic Newgrounds weirdness. Their first Lock Day came on May 26, 2004, one year after the submission of N, before being officially recognized by Newgrounds in 2000. Although the last properly celebrated lock day was in 2016, giving them a good 10 years with the only lock submission coming from Mad Animation. Review bombing became a major problem and was heavily cracked down on. I've actually touched on review bombing once before, back in my Henry Stickman flashlight video. I actually voiced my suspicion that infiltrating the airship was a victim of review bombing, pushing it way down in the daily awards. But after speaking with a Lock Legion member directly in the comments of that video, I learned that those crews simply didn't have the active user base at that time to execute a review bomb, even if they had wanted to. That one instead remains a mysterious combination of poor timing and other outside influences. That's the game you play on Newgrounds. You could have something pretty low effort end up in the top five, and you could have your year-long work go totally unnoticed. But the Newgrounds spin-off crews don't stop there. Far from it. We've got the Dock Division, Kitty Crew, Star Syndicate, Uzi Union, Hippie Hangout, Robot Rangers, Block Band, Socom Squad, Barney Bunch, and the Glock Group most of which were created, had about two members join, and dissolved again 48 hours later. I'm fairly certain there are others I'm forgetting, as so many of them kind of failed to catch on, they're a bit harder to track down. The Kitty Crew and Star Syndicate were definitely the two I remember the most. And neither of them for the right reasons. The Kitty Crew felt the most distinct, and didn't just do the simple joke of slapping something on a fruit's face. They were aggressively spammy in a rather infuriating way. I don't remember any other crew succeeding so well in getting under people's skin. They just had a particular edge to them that was hard to define. If I remember correctly, the Star Syndicate were kind of the worst troublemakers. At the peak of this crew culture, they really started to poke the bear. They had a thing called Daily Tunes, where they collectively worked to spam Newgrounds every single day. It was like trying to force a daily clock day. 
It crammed up the portal, frequently stole daily awards with them upvoting each other, exploiting new grounds, and there's specifically being rumors of them making attempts to hack the site, with some user accounts even being lost at some point, and I don't think it was ever proven it was actually the Star Syndicate. But even they weren't irredeemable. Their last hurrah and 400th daily tune was Night in Hotlanta, a 13 minute mega collaboration that showed the best side of what this crew had to offer, after seeing so, so much of the worst of what they had to offer. Many of these spin-offs started eating each other. There was some pretty legitimate warring, and the rivalries weren't quite so fun anymore. That's part of why many of them kind of dissipated and left Newgrounds over time. It didn't really have that fun, loving side to it that made people want to stick around. Any of these many spin-off crews was generally regarded as a ripoff, and were often started by X-Clock crew members who were banned for one reason or another. But just as frequently, it's simply someone who wanted to have a laugh and belonged to several of these groups with alts for each. They are ripoffs of a ripoff. And instead of becoming the loathsome part of the community they once were, crews are now seen as a silly sub culture and something to be taken lightly and joked about. The various crews poke fun at one another, collaborate all the time, and exist in this meta culture that is crews all the way down. But the clocks were always the original, and while once a year we go buck wild and try to push anything and everything through the portal, the clocks have developed into a well-realized and well-loved world filled with wacky characters and dedicated creators. There's none off the top of my head that I dislike. Each group had something unique to offer, so even if you felt you weren't a good fit for the clock crew, there were others you could join with the sole purpose of making flesh and having fun. Some people from the clock crew, Lock Legion and others, became professional artists, animators, or ended up making it big by other means. If the groups can help some people get started with what later became their careers, then I think it's all worth it. If you've never celebrated a clock day, head on over to Newgrounds and take a look at the chaos. It is a legacy that has carried on through yearly clock days, an official forum that remains active, and a continuous stream of both new members and the occasional oldie who returns to the fold. Many prominent creators even have their own alts, and have joined in, stepping outside the usual pressures of creating something at your fandom's expected point. Quality. Strawberry Clock themselves started as an alt, so it makes perfect sense so many others would take this approach. If anyone's curious what Strawberry has going on outside of Newgrounds and outside of the Clock crew, I work at EA now as a coder and I'm doing a bit of contract coding work on the side. One of them is with a Japanese game dev. I also have an Indie game I'm trying to get off the ground that's kind of like Pokemon, but deeply rooted by Far East folklore and mythology. Always keeping myself busy. All of this spawning from that random, unexpectedly hated, yet beloved, and often celebrated submission of B 20 years ago today. Here's to another 20 where I'll be 55 years old. I didn't think clocks would last this long, but they have, so it's not unrealistic to think that maybe it'll still be around then. One more time before I close out the video, there'll be links down below to that Two Left Thumbs publisher page. Check out both games, wishlist one, the other, both. Any small bit of interaction there helps immensely. You can support the YouTube channel through our Patreon, you'll end up with your name in the credits here, as well as having access to full interviews, including a more complete version of the one I did with Strawberry Clock. This really came down to the wire, I'm very happy to have gotten this video out on Clock Day for the 20th anniversary. I love talking Flash game and Newgrounds history. I highly encourage you to check out the playlist of flashlight videos I'll have in the end cards. If you got anything out of this, I guarantee you'll like those as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.